Hello, Bobby Torres of Fight Box Recording here to explain submixing and routing within Reaper. Just recently, I got a great question from an email subscriber. Hey, Bobby, my question is, what is a submix, glue mix, and master mix? Also, how do I do these within Reaper? Hope you are keeping well. Best, Jagger. Well, Jagger, thanks for the question, and it's a really good one because a lot of people seem to be confused by this. Now, if you're watching tutorials online, mine included, you might be seeing people working with Cubase, Logic, Pro Tools, and Reaper, Studio One, all different DAWs. And the reason why it's confusing is because the terminology and the signal flow might be slightly different between different DAWs, but the good news is that you could do pretty much the exact same thing within any DAW you're using including Reaper. You just have to go about it in a slightly different way. So within this video, we're gonna jump into Reaper, but I wanna start off by working within Pro Tools. Pro Tools is a more traditional style DAW. I wanna show you how routing works within Pro Tools, and then we'll jump to Reaper, and I'll show you how to do the exact same routing within Reaper, and what the differences are, and maybe what the different terminology might be that could be confusing you. Now, before I jump into Reaper, I'm gonna start in Pro Tools just so you could see the exact difference and how you could do the exact same things within Reaper. So right here is my master bus or my master mix. Absolutely everything in my mix that you see is being sent to this master mix. I have some plugins on this track and anything that comes through here is what's being exported and is what's being played through my studio monitors. So if I play my mix and pull this fader down, you'll hear the entire mix come down in volume. Let's check it out. So again, everything in my mix is being sent here. That is what a master fader or master mix is. And you can do this within any DAW. You also mentioned something called a glue mix, and there's no such thing as a glue mix. You might be referring to mix glue, which is generally just the overall balance of your mix and maybe compression that's on your master fader. So don't worry, there's no such thing as a glue mix, at least when it comes to tracks within your DAW. Now, the third part of your question is what a submix is, and think of it like this. A submix is a master fader for a specific group of instruments and you can always control what you send to these submixes. Let me explain. In my mix here, I have two rhythm guitars. I'm gonna solo these tracks, and let's take a listen. So I'm gonna play it again, and I want you to pay close attention to where signal is coming through when I have my guitar soloed within my tracks here, because I have a bunch of submixes here, and I wanna explain the signal flow. Check this out. Okay, so those two guitar tracks are being routed to a guitar submix. Again, think of a submix as a master fader only for a specific group of instruments. Now, because I want extra control over my mix, I have a rhythm guitar submix, and then I have something here called a guitar stem submix. This submix is being fed into this stem submix, and my stem submix is then fed into my master fader. So again, just to recap, these two tracks, my left and right rhythm guitars, are being sent to my guitar submix, and then my guitar submix is being sent to my guitar stem submix, and then my guitar stem submix finally is being sent to my master fader. Now the question is, what's the point of doing this? It's very simple. It's for organization and control within your DAW. Let's say I wanna EQ both of my rhythm guitars at once. It's much easier to send them to a submix and then EQ that submix instead of EQing them individually. It makes things simpler and cleaner. Now remember, this submix here is only my rhythm guitars. What happens if I wanna EQ, let's say, my lead guitars, my guitar delay, and other elements related to my guitars in general, then I can EQ my guitar stem track. So the EQ on my guitar stem submix is EQing all of my guitar-related elements. And if we look at my routing, my acoustic guitars here, my clean guitars, my overdub tracks are all being sent to my guitar stem submix track. So in other words, my guitar stem track is a master fader for all of my guitar tracks, even guitar effects. 
Now, the thing that's important to remember is that you can make this as simple or complicated as you want. For example, some people don't use the stem submixes that I use, and that's totally fine. I just find that they work best for me and my workflow. The important thing to understand is what a submix is. And again, remember, it's just a group of instruments being sent to a specific output, but that output always has to be fed to your master fader if you want it coming through your speakers or if you want to export your mix. Now, I know this video is about Reaper and I haven't even gotten into Reaper yet, but I want to explain one key difference between most DAWs and Reaper. Let's say I want to make a new stem mix for a new element within my track within Pro Tools, which is very similar to Logic and Cubase. I have to manually make a new track, create an auxiliary track, which isn't an audio track, it's just a pathway within my DAW, and I can't just send something to this track without creating an internal bus. So for example, in Pro Tools, I'd have to go to my buses and then create a new bus, make it stereo, let's call it, I don't know, keys. Okay, I have a new bus created, and then the input has to be assigned on my new aux track to keys. And I have to make sure the output is assigned to my master fader. Or if I want to send it to one of my stem tracks, like my synth stem, I can go in here and then send it to my synth stem. That's traditionally how most DAWs usually work. It's very manual and you have to create internal buses so you could tell your DAW where you want to send your signal. And this is where most Reaper users get very confused when they watch other videos where people are using other DAWs. Because in Reaper, there are no internal buses. There aren't even different types of tracks. You only have tracks and that's it. So the question is, how do you set up routing and submixes within Reaper? Well, I'm going to explain that right now. Let's jump into a Reaper session. Okay, so here I am in Reaper. I have a bunch of tracks set up and I have a mix happening. The first thing I want to mention is that in Reaper, your master fader is generally, you can have it sitting at different points within your mix, whether it's on the left side of your mix or the right, but it doesn't matter. Reaper has it set up by default for you. In Pro Tools, you have to actually make a master fader. And in Reaper, by default, your tracks are automatically sent to your master fader. It's just an output within your DAW. But you can do the same things that you do in other DAWs. You can put plugins on the output. You can automate the volume. Same deal. Now, if you remember from when I was in Pro Tools, I had to actually make an auxiliary track and make an internal bus and then tell my audio tracks to be sent to that bus. It's, it's a different process than what you have to do in Reaper. It's even easier in Reaper and much more streamlined. So now let me explain submixes within Reaper because it's a little different than how you do it in a more traditional DAW like Pro Tools or Cubase or something like that. And let's start with rhythm guitars because we just went over rhythm guitars in the Pro Tools example. These two rhythm guitar tracks that you see, these two orange tracks that I have here, are being sent to a submix called Guitars. And this submix is being sent to my master fader. I don't have stem tracks set up within this session, but the process is exactly the same. As long as you understand how submixes work, you're good to go. But the question is, how do you create a submix within Reaper? Now, like I mentioned previously, Reaper has no internal buses and you only have tracks. There's only one kind of track in Reaper. They handle audio, MIDI, submixes, just tracks. Again, in a DAW like Pro Tools or Logic or Cubase, you have different types of tracks, auxiliary tracks, groove tracks, effects tracks, all different types of tracks. But again, you could do the same things regardless of the DAW you're using, you just have to go about it in a slightly different way. Now I have two lead guitar tracks here and I don't have a submix for them, but I'm gonna create one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new blank track right after my rhythm guitar and before my lead guitars. Okay, and here's my blank track. As you can see, there is no audio on this track, but I wanna make it a submix for my lead guitar tracks. So first I'm gonna get organized and I always keep my submixes red. So I'm gonna just change the color to red and I'm gonna name it Leads Submix. So we have our lead guitar tracks here and we have this blank track just sitting right before our lead guitars. So I'm just gonna play part of the lead guitar track and let's see what happens. So as you can see, no signal is coming through our leads submix yet. The way you make that happen is so simple. This is what I love about Reaper. If you look at your track in the edit window, you see this little folder icon. 
What that will do if you click that button will route any track sitting below it through that track. It'll in a sense, turn it into a submix automatically. So I'm gonna click that button, that little plus sign. So now that we've clicked that icon, what we've created is a folder track within Reaper. And a folder track acts as a submix. But there's one extra step that we have to take before we move on. When we created our folder track, what we did was tell Reaper to send every single track in our mix that follows that track to route all of that audio through our new folder track. And we don't want that. We only want to route our two lead guitar tracks through this particular folder track. So what you have to do is go through your final track that you want routed through that folder track. And in this case, we only have two tracks, our lead guitar and our lead guitar double. Our lead guitar double is our final track that we want being routed through this newly created folder track slash submix. So in order to make this happen in Reaper, we have to go to our lead guitar double track, click that same plus icon, click it again, and now we're done. As you can see here, visually, it makes sense. We have our folder track and we have our lead guitar tracks being sent through it. So as long as I didn't mess this up, you should see signal from my lead guitar track and my lead guitar double coming through my new leads submix. Let's take a look and see if signal is coming through our new folder track. Let's check it out. So as you can see, the signal from these two lead guitar tracks is being sent through my new lead guitar submix. Now, Jagger, thanks for asking me this question. It's been something I've wanted to address for a very long time on this channel. Again, you can accomplish the same results regardless of the DAW you're using. You just have to go about it in a slightly different way. And although Reaper is great and very powerful, it is unique in the way that it handles routing. But at the end of the day, just remember, a master fader is that final stage that all of your tracks are being sent through. And a submix is sort of like a mini master fader that you're sending specific groups of instruments through. It helps with organization and just overall workflow and mix management. So tell me, I'd love to know, do you use Reaper? Do you like the way it handles routing or do you prefer more traditional DAWs like Pro Tools or Cubase or Logic? Let me know by leaving a comment in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your opinion. If you found this video helpful, like, comment, subscribe, and share. And do not forget to click the little bell icon so you can be notified every time I upload one of our weekly videos on all things metal and rock production. You can both like and follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Links are in the description below. Now, if you dug the guitar tone that you heard in this video, you could download the exact same impulse response that I used by clicking on a link below in this video's description. The IR is completely free. Download it and load it into your favorite amps and plug in to get right to dialing in killer metal guitar tone with ease. Till next time, happy mixing.